Hey, you guys, Flickers of Fear time once again, and we are continuing with our folk horror February. Now, this movie here is one that's been on my to watch list pretty much forever. I think that when I talked about uh, Mario Bava's classic Black Sunday, which I think was back uh, around Halloween of 2021, I think I might have mentioned this movie because the movie Black Sunday is very, very, very loosely based on the same short story slash novella as this movie is based on. Although seeing both of them, I don't know if you'd necessarily know that because other than it being about a witch and, you know, coming back to life and stuff, there's really not a lot similar. So this movie is called V, V-I-Y. Uh, and it came out in 1967 based on a story by Nikolai Gogol. And this was actually, as far as I am aware, the first uh, Soviet era horror film uh, to be distributed in the USSR because obviously, uh, you know, the Soviet regime wasn't too big on horror movies and they kind of had to approve everything that was going into a movie. Uh, so this was kind of the first uh, one that got away with being a horror movie. And I guess it kind of got away with that because it was based on, you know, the work of a respected author. And also it's not so much, I don't want to say it's like not so much like a straightforward horror film, but it's more like a folk horror or a fairy tale. So I guess it can kind of like get away with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you can say, oh, it's, you know, it's just a fairy tale. Now I will say the vibe of this, I know some of you guys out there <laughs> that are watching this are Misty's like I am. Mystery Science Theater did a whole bunch of Russian slash Scandinavian type of fantasy movies. I'm um, talking about like Magic Voyage of Sinbad, uh, Jack Frost, The Day the Earth Froze, uh, The Sword and the Dragon. This is kind of in that same kind of vein, like tonally. It's not as wacky or not as over the top. It's a fairly grounded witch story. So it's like more of like a folk tale than some of the kind of more like way over the top stuff. But if you've seen those movies on Mystery Science Theater, then you'll have an idea of what kind of like special effects you can expect, what kind of tone you can expect from this movie. So this movie, um, it's on Shudder at the moment. It's been on Shudder for like a really long time and I kept meaning to watch it because I'm like, it's uh, it keeps coming up. I don't know if you guys, if you don't have Shudder, they have, uh, you know, they have all the movies that you can just look at in alphabetical order or whatever, but then they also have them in collections and V is always in their, you know, horror essentials. And I think it was the only movie that was in horror essentials that I had not yet seen. And then when I when I saw them talking about it on the folk horror documentary, I was like, oh yeah, I really need to get around to watching that because I feel like it was kind of a gap in my horror movie knowledge. Uh, so especially because I'd already seen Black Sunday and I'd already heard about this movie. So I definitely, you know, wanted to get around to watching it, so I finally did. So it is on Shudder. It's also on Tubi for free, uh, if you wanna watch it on there, at least as of February, 2022. I believe it's also on Amazon Prime, although I don't know if it's free or if you have to pay for it, you know what I mean? So, uh, so there are some places that you can watch it. So what we have in this story. So at the very beginning, and now I will say too, that it's a pretty short movie. It's only 77 minutes. A lot of it, probably like the first two acts are kind of like, I'm not gonna say that it's almost like comedic, but there are like a lot of goofy kind of moments. Now I will say I'm not kind of, I'm not sure. Severin, I think, put out a really nice remastered Blu-ray of this. I'm not sure if it has the original Russian language uh, soundtrack, like, you know, the, the talking and, uh, with English subtitles, because the version that's on Shutter is English dubbed. Now I don't usually like that, but you know, what are you going to do? It's so I'm assuming the one on Tubi is also English dubbed. I kind of wish that they had gotten the Russian language one because as I said, other than Giallo films, I give them a pass, but every other movie I really, really prefer to watch in it's, you know, in its original language, I really don't like it's just too distracting for me, like watching actors and knowing that that's not their real voices. And that did kind of like take me out of it uh, for this as well. So I'm not really sure if some of the goofiness 
uh, was came from the dubbing, which is actually good as dubbing goes. Uh, it's not it's not terrible. It's not over the top. But I, you know, it's it's just hard for me to say that maybe it's some of the dubbing that caused. Although some of the stuff was absolutely meant to be goofy, so let's say it like that. But yeah, so honestly, like the first, I'm gonna even say maybe the first hour of this movie is kind of like, it's not all goofy, but it does have like a lot of goofy moments in it, and it doesn't really go full on horror until like the last 10 minutes or so, but that last 10 minutes is a doozy, I will say. Uh, so yeah, so what we have at the beginning, there's this seminary, so there's all of these dudes that are training to be monks. Now, <laughs> at the beginning, I guess they're going on break or they're going on vacation or so. I don't know how monk school works. <laughs> so I don't know. So, so they're like, woo, spring break. I don't know. But they do kind of act like that. Like the, the guy that's the head of the of the monk school is like, now you, last time, like you, you did this and that and you did this bad thing and you stole all this shit. It's like, let's not get up to these shenanigans this time. And like, you all behave yourselves and blah, blah, blah. And like all of the monks are like, yeah, right. Okay. Like that's gonna, like that's gonna happen. But yeah, so they they kind of go off like frat bros type of thing. Uh, so they all kind of go their own little ways for for monk spring break. Now there are three uh, guys that are go and travel together, and they kind of get lost. The main guy uh, that we're following is a guy named Coma Brutus, who's the main character. Now, as they kind of get lost. Um, you know, a after a spot of uh, stealing some chickens and some light sexual assault uh, <laughs> of some laundry women, uh, you know, so they kind of get lost and it's getting to be dark. So they see this farmhouse like out and they're like, hey, why don't we go up to that farmhouse and, you know, we can stay there and they'll give us some food and stuff. And it's like, it's really funny to me. I see this a lot in these kind of like, uh, you know, folk tale type of things like fairy tales. And it's just kind of like so... You just like little little student monks. You're just like wandering around the countryside, and you just like go up to a random ass person's house and be like, "Hey, feed me and put me up for the night." And they like have to do it. I'm like, that's some entitled shit right there. But and they're kind of dicks about it too. I gotta say. So these three guys go up to this farmhouse, and this uh, very old woman uh, who's actually played by a male actor, which happened a lot in these kind of like I'd, it was always kind of like witch characters. They always seem to be played by men. Uh, but yeah, so it, it was the case in this uh, thing as well. So this old woman comes out and she's like, well, you can't stay here because I have my, the house is full of people. I don't have any room. And the guys like start whining. It's like, oh, come on. You know, we're we're from God and everything. And like, you have to give us something to eat. And she is like, OK, fucking fine. Um, she's like, you can stay here, but all of you have to stay like in a different spot. Like one of you can stay in the loft and one of you can stay out here. And then she seems to take a shine in particular to Coma. It's, it might be his bowl haircut. I'm not real sure. Um, <laughs> he's actually, he has a good looking face, but it's kind of hard to pull off that hair. I, just, I, I can't really think of anybody that could pull off that hair, but you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, so he goes to sleep in the barn and then later on, uh, the old woman comes out and straight up starts to uh, essentially seduce him. And the guy's like, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, this is a very, very old woman, actually a very, very old man playing a very, very old woman. And uh, he's just like, yeah, no, not for all the tea in China or something like something uh, to that effect. And uh, so, the, so the old woman decides, well, you know, if you're going to be that way, then I'm going to do this shit right here. And she basically kind of puts a sort of spell on him, climbs up on his shoulders and starts riding him like a horse. Like he starts to fly and like she's uh, sitting on his shoulders and they're like flying through the air and stuff. And he's just like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Like his feet are moving and he's like flying through the air and stuff. It's green screen effect and you can tell that it's green screen, but it actually looks pretty good. Cause like I said, this is a fantasy movie. So it's kind of like, you know, you know, like when you see those Sinbad movies like with Ray Harryhausen and stuff like that, it's like, yes, it looks fake, but because this whole uh, the whole kind of like theme of this movie or the whole, you know, it's a fantasy. And so it's all artificial. So you kind of like buy into it. You know what I mean? So it, you know, the, the special effects, you can say, you know, it's 1967. Um, you know, you could say they were crude or whatever, but they still look cool though. It like gives the movie like a real charm. So, uh, finally, so he's riding around with this old woman on his back, hag ridden. That's what they call that. 
And uh, he finally twigs onto the fact he's like, oh, this is a witch. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> it took him like quite a while to figure that shit out. Uh, so yeah, so this witch flies him around and then finally they land and he starts beating the shit out of the witch, like with a stick or whatever. And uh, then the voice was like, stop, 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 you're killing me. And then he looks down and suddenly it is no longer like a creepy old woman, but it is now a very, very beautiful young woman. And it appears that he has killed her or at least beaten her to within an inch of her life. So at this point, he's just kind of like, oh, shit, I better get the fuck out of here. So he takes off. Now he goes back to the seminary. Uh, and he's just kind of like, okay, well, fuck that vacation. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hole up here for the, for the rest of the time. Uh, but then kind of like the head of the seminary comes to him and says, Hey, um, this rich guy in this next village or whatever, uh, his young daughter is dying and she asked for you specifically to come to this village to, you know, say prayers over her, like while she's dying. And he's like, what the fuck? Why would she ask for me? I'm just like a monk student. I'm just, I'm a trainee. You know what I mean? It's like, how would she know who I am and all this other stuff? He's like, I don't really want to go. And then, uh, you know, the, the head of the monk school is just kind of like, oh, you're absolutely going or you're going to get lashed. So, you know, he's like, you seem to think this is like a democracy and you can just like do what the fuck you want. Well, that's just not how monk school works. So he's like, you have to go. The guys are already here with the cart. Get your ass in there. So he goes to this town. Now, it will surprise no one when he goes into the church in this village. Uh, the rich guy comes and talks to him and says, you know, my daughter is dying. Um, she actually dies before they get there. Uh, you know, so they thought that she was still going to be alive by the time they got there. By the time they got there, because they stopped for vodka just like so many times. <laughs> Russia, y'all. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So by the time they got there, she was already dead. Uh, so the, the rich guy, the girl's father is basically like, well, I don't know why, like she asked for you specifically and I want you to, for the next three nights, I'm going to lock you in this church with her body and you have to say all these prayers over her. So her soul goes to heaven or whatever the hell. Now the dad is kind of like suspicious, like, well, ha do you know my daughter? And obviously, like, Koma is, like, looking at the girl going, oh, shit, that's the girl, that's the witch that I beat to death. And he's like, no, bro, I totally don't know who she is. I don't know why she would ask for me, of all people. Maybe I just have, like, a really cool reputation or whatever. Although he's very open. I will say one thing about Koma is that he is very open about how not uh holy he is you know what i mean he's just kind of like even when he's reading out of the bible he's like why shouldn't we be allowed to smoke why shouldn't we be allowed to get drunk all the time why shouldn't we be allowed to like you know <laughs> grab women's asses and stuff like that so you know at least he's not like pretending he's not like being hypocritical i guess but yeah so he tells the dad i don't know her I never met her. I don't know why she would ask for me specifically to come here, but if you want me to do it, I'll do it. And the dad is basically like, you know, you're going to, I'm going to give you all this money if you do it. So he's like, okay, fine. But again, he, he does lie to him and he says, I don't know why your daughter asked for me, even though he absolutely does. Cause he's essentially the one that killed her. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> cause he's the one that beat her. And so, uh, but he basically says to the dad, he's like, may God strike me dead. If I'm lying right now, God doesn't strike him dead. So the dad like buys it. So the rest of the movie from then on is his kind of like three night ordeal. So they lock Coma into this church and it's really cool looking like with all the creepy, like I guess it's Russian Orthodox like art or whatever those creepy fucking <laughs> Jesuses and stuff. I love that shit. So, uh, so it's all over the walls. It's like this big wooden thing with like zillions of candles everywhere. Her body is in the middle in this big black coffin. And so he goes in there at first and he's kind of like a little weirded out because as I said, he recognizes her and he knows that he's the one that's responsible for her being dead and he kind of feels bad about it. Uh, so he's maybe suspicious that some shit is because he does know she's a witch. Nobody else in the village. I think some of the other village people, the village people, I think some of the other dudes, I didn't mean to say village people. I think some of the other dudes in the village to like suspect that she's a witch. Cause when they're all sitting around drinking, which they do a lot of in this movie. Okay. They kind of tell him a story about that's very similar. Like a, what happened to him? Like this woman that was riding around on another dude's shoulders. Like it would like he was a horse. So I think that maybe some of the villagers kind of suspect, she was a witch but maybe they were afraid to say anything because like the rich guy owns the village and he would have him killed or whatever i don't really know so he's locked into the church uh for the first night 
and he has he lights all the candles up and he uh makes like a circle around he has like a podium that has like his bible on it and he makes like a chalk circle around there to like protect him uh so it doesn't take too long before uh unsurprisingly the witch wakes up and starts to try to get him but because he has a circle around himself like she can't get in now at first it seems like she can't see like she's sort of like feeling around and then she does like some marcel marceau shit like she's trying to get into his uh you know magical circle and stuff and she can't get in there and he's like flipping out as you would because obviously he thought this woman was dead um he knows she's a witch and he's like oh shit i killed her i'm in big fucking trouble now uh but for the first night he is able to like stave her off uh, you know, because he has the circle on. So they let him out in the morning and, you know, he's drinking again. And uh, the other guys are like, so uh, what happened in there last night? Again, the way they like react makes me think they probably knew like some shit went down. But he's like, plays it real cool. He's like, nothing, you know, I just heard some noises and stuff. That's that's all, nothing, nothing bad happened. But then when, you know, when the second day, like the second night starts to approach and he's, you know, it's getting to be time where he has to go back in there, he starts kind of like freaking out again and like drinking a lot and whatnot. And like all the villagers are like, are you like scared going? No, no, I'm a Cossack. I'm not, we're not scared of anything. And, uh, you know, but obviously he's like pissing his pants in terror. So again, he gets locked in for the second night. And again, the witch wakes up and like flies around and like tries to get him and shit. Um, you know, this bit of the movie, a little bit, you know, it's not going in a direction that you don't expect. Um, you know, he's locked in there three nights. And that's pretty common, like in fairy tale type stories, I guess. You know, it's always kind of like in threes. So second night, it's, it just seems like each night it's getting like worse and worse. So, uh, so at that point, it's, it, it's getting worse. Like the witch is really like flying all over the fucking place, and it's, it looks really cool. Actually, she's kind of like I really liked the one shot where uh, she's in the coffin and there's like a lid on it, and the, like the lid just like pops off. You know what I mean? And she just like comes out, and then she's like flying around, like trying, like trying to get him. And she looks really cool, like her outfit and everything. And so, uh, so he survives the second night, but after that, that was like so scary. He's like, man, fuck this shit. I'm just like out of here. And he tries to run away, but they actually do find him or bring him back. And the rich guy's like, look, you have to see this shit through to the end. You have to do all three nights. If you do it, I'll give you like a thousand pieces of gold. If you don't do it, then I'll give you like a thousand lashes, which would probably kill you now that I'm thinking about it. So, uh, so he's like really kind of thinking about not doing it but he's like no i better do it that's a lot of money and again has to fortify himself with lots and lots and lots of vodka before he goes in for the third and final night now the third night is when all hell breaks loose literally and this is actually like pretty much the coolest part of the movie as i said up to then it's kind of like sort of predictable and it has like some kind of goofy stuff you know everybody's like constantly drunk um he's like every dude in this is like just a drunken idiot pretty much and uh it's just like falling all over and singing and you know and, and whatever and dancing and stuff like that and it's just like very silly but this last part like this third night when he gets locked in there uh that's when the that's when the shit like pops off you know what i mean because not only now is the witch in there but then like all these other demons like start coming out of the fucking walls and just all kind of crazy shit happens and this is like absolutely the best part i really really liked all of the design like all of these like guy they're all like painted with this uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of little people and then it's just kind of like, you know, regular size people and they're all kind of like painted this sort of like bluish green type of color and they're all fucked up looking and they're all like climbing out of like holes in the walls and like running down the walls and they did like all these really cool um, like visual effects. Some of them have w wings like bat wings and they could like fly around and shit. And, uh, you know, there's, there's these one parts where they're like these big, huge, like clawed hands, like there's a whole bunch of them like coming, surrounding him and shit. And then at the end, like the witch, like to get him, she finally summons V, who is, I guess, head demon, head monster, whatever, who it's, I mean, it's obviously like really, really fake looking, but I don't know. I really kind of liked this monster design. Like he comes in and he's this big lumbering, lumpy monster. And my favorite thing about him was that his eyelids, he had these big fucking eyelids like that. And he tells the other demons, 
He's like, you guys, I can't see him. Like, I can't see Coma. He's like, can you guys flip up my eyelids? He doesn't say it like that. But he's like, can you guys flip up my eyelids so I can see him? And they, like, literally, they have to manually, like, put his eyelids there on, like, hinges. It's like, I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cool. And, like, his eyes are, like, all big and glittery and shit. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, so Coma essentially gets, like, surrounded by all these demons, and they're all just, like, beating the crap out of him and shit like that. And uh, that's, gotta say, spoiler alert, that's pretty much the end of Coma. You're not entirely sure whether he dies or not, because they kind of, like, they leave it, you know, all the demons are there, they're just, like, you know, wailing on him and stuff, and, the, and V is there, the monster and the witch and everything, and they're all, like, fucking with him. And then, you know, the cock crows outside, like, you know, it's dawn, which obviously they have to scatter, they have to disperse. So they do that, and then they just leave Coma lying there, and then they kind of, like, fade to black. And then, like, the last scene is just his two buddies, like, his two compatriots that, uh, you know, got lost with him earlier, like, at the beginning of the movie. And they're sitting out front of the church, like, supposed to be working, like, supposed to be painting, but of course they're drinking uh, and, you know, slacking off. And, uh... They, you know, one of them says, oh, let's have a drink to Coma. You know, it's sad that he died. And do you think the witch had anything to do with it? Blah, blah, blah. But then the other guy says, I don't really think he's dead. Maybe he could walk up to us right now. So they leave it kind of ambiguous. I haven't actually read the uh, story this is based on. So I'm not sure if that's accurate to how the story ends or not. If the ending is left ambiguous as to whether Coma is actually dead or not. But they leave it ambiguous in the movie. You're led to believe that he probably is dead, but they leave the possibility open that maybe he's still around somewhere. Although, as I said, it seems more like a straight ahead revenge story. I mean, it seemed like he pissed off the witch by not not succumbing to her advances, <laughs> you know, when she was in her uh, old crone form. Uh, so she decided, well, I'm going to ride you around like a horse and then I'm going to punish you by, you know, turning young and hot and then dying and haunting your ass and making you be in this fucking church with all the demons and everything. So I'm assuming it was just like a revenge story, you know what I mean? But, you know, you, you can read it any way you want to, uh, actually. So this movie, it's, it's weird because it's only 77 minutes, but as I said, like the beginning part, it's, re it's shot really well and the acting seems to be really, really good as well. Um, like I said, hard to tell because of the dubbing. I really wish that I had seen it uh, Russian language. If I watch it again, uh, I'll definitely try to seek out that version because I'm sure that's much better. Uh, but like I said, the English dubbing, dubbing is not bad. I mean, I've seen like a lot worse than that, but it is still a little bit distracting. Uh, so keep in mind that it is a fairy tale and it does have a lot of comedic or kind of like goofy sort of elements leading up to it. But that said, once he gets locked into the church, there's still kind of some goofy shit because he's scared and he's trying to talk himself out of being scared. Uh, and that's kind of like funny, like in a Scooby-Doo sort of way. But as the, you know, as the nights progress and it gets worse and worse, it actually like some of the imagery, particularly in the last 10 minutes when all the demons come and, you know, V, the monster comes and everything are actually really, really cool. Like there's some skeletons walking around and shit like that. It's just, so it's really, really cool. Like the look of it. Um, but don't go into it thinking this is going to be the scariest movie ever or, you know, something like that. It is, it is very much like a fantasy, a fairy tale. And it's kind of like, I'm glad I saw it. I don't, I didn't love it, but I really did like the imagery toward the end. You know what I mean? It really did have like some, like some really cool, creepy kind of look to it at the end. And I really liked that. I actually liked the whole witch situation too, but you know, the, the set design was really, really nice. Like the inside of the church, I was really into that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like a fun movie and I really think it's, it's interesting to watch like as a historical artifact because it was the first horror movie to come out of the Soviet Union. But if you like a lot of those kind of, you know, russo finnish fantasy movies, especially like the ones they did on Mystery Science Theater, then you should probably check this out because this is kind of very similar vibe to that and you'd probably really dig it. But yeah, this is definitely one that pretty much everybody's, I know you probably should see it at some point. 
I think that they did um, a modern retelling of this in 2014. I'm not sure what country it was done in, but I haven't seen that, so I don't know if it's any good. But as I said, it's it's nothing like, I know it's supposedly based on the same story as Black Sunday, but because Black Sunday was so loosely based on this story, um, really the two movies hardly have anything in common with each other other than being about a witch and, you know, there being like scenes of like a witch in a tomb, you know what I mean? Uh, that's pretty much the only thing that I can think of that's similar. But, you know, it's just a fun, colorful witch movie that, as I said, it's interesting as a historical artifact because of its uh, production history and things like that. And it's a pretty decent uh, folk horror fairy tale uh, type of movie. So if you've seen V from 1967, uh, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Uh, if you'd like to watch it, as I said, it's on Shudder. I believe you can also watch it on Tubi for free and you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Although I don't know if it's free with Amazon Prime subscription or if you have to pay extra. But let me know if you've seen it, if you did what you thought about it, and uh, that will do it for this Flickers of Fear as we continue our Folk Horror February. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.